Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley, and welcome to another video. Now this year's been a little bit crazy for me. At the beginning of the year, I flew out to Germany for a trade show called Creative World, and most recently we went to New Orleans for a trade show called Creativation. Both of these trade shows, industry professionals and brands attend, and we get to share all about our amazing new products and what they do with the crafting world. It's so much fun not only to see so much creative inspiration, but also share my products in a lot more detail with brands and distributors, as well as creative professionals, so you get a deep look into the products. I wasn't able to take lots of videos at these shows because I was busy demoing my products, but I thought I would sit down with all of you and share everything that I shared at these trade shows, which is really just a super deep dive into my products. So hopefully you walk away with tons of knowledge on how to use them to create some beautiful greeting cards. Also, everything I use is listed and linked down below. And if you use those links to shop, it helps support me and I really appreciate it. Now, without further ado, Let's get into it. Now let's start it off where I began with my Simon Hurley Create dye ink pads. And surprisingly, there was a lot of questions about these at the show, which I was kind of surprised about because it's been five years since we released them, but I thought I would do a deep dive into what they can do and how they work on my cardstock. Now my inks are a water reactive dye based ink pad that come in some really bright and beautiful colors. When I first released these, I was a little bit nervous because I knew that I loved them, but without getting people to actually try them and get their hands on it, it kind of sounds like every other ink. So I would get so many questions and kind of comparisons to other inks on the market, which made me feel a little bit insecure. But five years later, I'm really proud of these ink pads. And I'm so glad that so many of you have gotten your hands on them and absolutely loved them. What I love about them is they stamp really well, they blend absolutely amazing, and they react with water. So many other inks on the market can only do two out of the three of those things. So what's really awesome about these is they're my go-to ink for any project because they do all three really well. So let's start off by going in and sharing how they blend. I'm starting off with a little bit of Prom Queen ink, which is this bright pink color. I'm going to swipe my blending tool back and forth on the ink pad like this, and then I'll go right onto my stark white cardstock and start my blending. And you can see just how intense and beautiful this color is, and that there's no harsh marks on the cardstock as I'm blending. My inks blend super smooth, and I really love that there's no harsh marks with very little effort, so you get a beautiful and smooth blend as you go. And then I can fade this right out into white, and again, you can see a really beautiful, soft fade. And this is my Simon Harley Create Stark White cardstock. You need a good cardstock and a good ink whenever you're blending. If you have one more than the other, it can kind of make your ink blending not look so great. So what I love about this cardstock is it's bright white, it's super thick, but it also takes the ink really well. There's no coating on top of here. So I can go in and keep building up this color and make it darker and darker. So if I want to, I can go in and layer this up and you can see it's getting so much darker and giving a really nice solid color here. Some cardstocks have a coating on it, so if you notice yourself getting fingerprints in your cardstock, that can mean your ink isn't taking well to that cardstock because there might be a little coating on it. And you also aren't able to get as rich and saturated of colors if your cardstock is coated. So if you've got a good ink but you're struggling with ink blending, maybe try switching out the cardstock as well because both play an important factor. Now next I'm gonna use a little bit of Shooting Star, which is this beautiful yellow color. And also when I'm inking, I apply pressure with my ink pad and I go back and forth. If you lightly tap, you're gonna have a hard time getting nearly as much ink as you need. So I like to put some pressure and go back and forth and you'll get the perfect amount of ink. Blend this out and start blending it into the pink color. Now I like to overlap these. They're translucent dye-based inks, which means as you blend them into each other, they're going to interact and create a new color in between. So this blend of that Shooting Star and Prom Queen created this gorgeous orange color on the line. I love how the inks interact and blend so beautifully and seamlessly and you get such gorgeous color blends as you mix them. Then last but not least, I'll go into a little bit of Clear Skies. And this blue color is absolutely gorgeous. It's kind of a nice light blue. And I'll bring it into the yellow, and you can see when it overlaps, it creates a nice, beautiful green color in between. Now, sometimes people ask the question, what color should I start with if I'm going to try your inks and maybe build up a collection? I always recommend these three. Prom Queen, Shooting Star, and Clear Skies. A good pink, yellow, and blue is going to create a nice rainbow blend. So when you overlap these, you'll get an orange and a green. And I love how bright and intense these colors are as well. It goes really nicely with my card making style because I love the bright colors. Next, I wanna show just how well these inks react with water. So I'm gonna go in with the In Bloom Layering Stencil Set, which has three layers that creates this beautiful floral pattern. You have the large florals, this medium size, and then an even smaller stencil. I'm gonna go in with the largest size florals. I'm going to lay my stencil down and line it up. And then I'll go in with a water mister and just mist over the background to get it to react with the water. And this is just water inside of here. So I'll spray it down quite a few times over top of that pattern. Then 
I can lift it off and you'll see it's already reacting with that water just beautifully and it sort of creates this bleached effect in the ink. Now if I want the design to stop moving and bleeding, I'm gonna go in with my heat tool and just heat set this. This will speed up the drying process and it will also sort of intensify that bleached effect. You don't need to do this step either, you could just leave it to dry there, but I find it just helps to speed up the process a little bit. But you can see just how beautifully that water lightens and lifts that color up and really reacts with it quite quickly. It's a really great property that I love about my inks because you can do fun techniques like this to lift up the color, but you can also go in with water and just use the colors as watercolors and use them with a paintbrush to color in images. Once it's dry, check out how stunning that looks. I love that smoothly blended background with that really great lifted design just using that water. Now let's build up that layered effect a little bit more. I'm gonna go inside of my stamp wheel. I love this sticky mat for stenciling inside of here. And I'll just stick down my cardstock design right onto that sticky mat to hold it in place. Then I'll grab the third layer of that in bloom stencil set, which is the smallest florals. I'm going to flip it over so the glossy side is facing that sticky mat. That's because there's a coating on this matte side, so you don't want to stick the coating to any sort of sticky surface or it will peel it off. So again, glossy side facing down towards that sticky mat, and I'll line it up with the rest of my design. Then place it down, and we'll just stick that glossy side right down into the sticky mat to hold it in place while we do our stenciling. And now we can go back in with the exact same color of our inks, and I've switched to blending brushes this time because the blending brushes are going to get down into all of the sharp edges and details of this stencil, and when the points are that small, that foam isn't going to get down into the details. So just using these little alternate blending brushes and going right back in over top of that design. And again, since these are translucent dye-based inks, and because the cardstock takes the ink so well and won't ever stop taking that color, so layering up that same color is going to darken that design a little bit and make it look like a much darker color, but it'll still be the same tone of color. And I have one of these little alternate blending brushes for each color family, which makes it really easy to use them and not have to do so much cleaning every time you want to use it. And I also find that cleaning sort of breaks down the blending brushes. So by having one dedicated to each color family, you're not going to have to break down that brush as much by washing it so much. And then lastly, I'll go down into this clear skies color and I'll just layer that right over top of that last layer of blue. This is also a great way if you don't have a ton of colors to layer them up like this because you'll see when I lift the stencil off, just layering them up makes it look like a completely different color because you would think that it wouldn't be able to get this dark, but they layer really beautifully on top of each other to create a darker version of that color. So you'll see in this design, how cool is that? So you've got a darker pink, yellow, and blue going all throughout the design, and it really gives this background tons of depth and dimension, which I love. All right, we'll peel this off the sticky mat, and then I'm going to spray this down, and my inks clean off with water really beautifully without staining, so I'll just wipe this down with a little bit of paper towel. And once that water's evaporated off of there, that mat will be nice and sticky again, so you can use it with your next project. Now there's a little bit of excess ink on the stencil, so another way to demonstrate the great watercolor effect of these inks, I'm gonna go in with my mister with just that water inside of it and spray this down quite a bit. You wanna spray it enough so that ink kind of move around in the stencil and beat up. This turns it into a watercolor and then I can flip over that stencil and lay it right on top of my cardstock. And you can see it's gonna move and blend right when we place it down. Then I'll go in with a bit of paper towel, lay that over top and press it down. And the paper towel is really great because it's going to pick up any color that seeps out of that stencil and keep your design nice and sharp. And then we can lift this off and check out that gorgeous watercolor background. It looks even lighter on camera than it does in person, but it just creates a really beautiful watercolor look, makes it look like you hand painted this, even though it was just a stencil design. But I love that you can get sort of a two for one stencil design just by inking up one background with the stencil and using the excess with a little bit of water on another background. All right, to turn this into a card, I've trimmed the colorful panel down and I'm going to glue it right on top of an A2 size card base. So it's got a nice white border all the way around. And then I'm going to do some die cutting using my everyday foliage set. I really love this set with the different leaves in here. They're really nice and organic and kind of imperfect too, just like they would be in nature. And it's got this little wildflower looking thing too, which I really like and I'm going to use. And then it's one of my favorite die sets that I made. I keep coming back to this one a lot. It's called Brilliant Butterflies and it's got tons of different size butterflies as well as their little shadows. I'm gonna go into this smallest one right here and just get the detailed layer. Then I'll bring in my platinum blackening machine and I'm going to cut both of these images out of my stark white cardstock. And then we'll run it right through and we'll do a little bit of awkward die cutting. So we'll stare at each other as we run it through our die cutting machine.
and then I'll cut the flower image out a couple of times to layer it up on my card. And to layer these up, I'll just add a little bit of liquid glue onto the back of the die cut using my Misty glue press. And then I'll take the time to just slowly pinch around the image slightly, and that's going to make sure that all of the layers are lined up correctly as you stack it. And that's why I love that liquid glue, because it gives you that time to move things around and make sure everything is perfectly layered and in place before you stick it all down. And then we can add this right down onto our card. And then I'll take my butterfly, and you could just sit here straight down like that, but I want to fold that front wing up a little bit like this so that it looks like it's about to land and also gives it a little bit more dimension off the card. So I'm just gonna add glue to this back part of it so that this sits flat onto the card and then I'll place it down and glue it into place. So that top wing still has lots of dimension to it, kind of makes it look like it's flying and kind of landing onto that wildflower. I love that you can manipulate dyes like that to give it a whole new life. And for this sentiment, I'm gonna go into the Inked Blooms stamp set, and I love the different kind of sympathy sentiments in this set. I know we don't always want to send sympathy cards, but having this set on hand like this that has some great encouraging sentiments in it is really important. And I'm gonna use the sentiment that says, sending thoughts and prayers. Then I'll ink this up using Versamark Clear Sticky Ink and stamp it right down on to the black card stock. We'll throw over a layer of white heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and I find lightly blowing on it helps get rid of any of the excess powder. Then we can heat set it till it's nice and bright white. And that finishes this card off perfectly. I love that brightly ink blended background using the In Bloom stencil by applying different intensities of ink to get a really cool look. And finishing the super colorful background off with some white die cuts is the perfect way to do it. I love that butterfly flying up to the wildflower. I think it's such a great focal point and absolutely beautiful. These sympathy cards are not always things we want to send out, but it's good to have them in your stash in case if it's needed. Now speaking about the inks, how they blend and interact with each other to create new colors when they overlap, I want to show you a technique that really illustrates this that you can try with stencils you have at home. For this technique, I'm going to use the Deco Diamond Stencil from my Simon Hurley Create line. I love the kind of thin lines of the stencil and that Art Deco design that it has. So I'll just line this up front and center on my stark white cardstock. Then I'll grab a bit of mint tape out of this mint tape dispenser, tape it down to hold the stencil in place while I do my ink blending. Perfect. Now I'm gonna use these large Altenew blending brushes because it covers a lot of surface area. And I'll go in starting off with a little bit of Prom Queen ink, which is this gorgeous hot pink color. And I can just go right onto the surface and start blending this over top of my background. You can see that gorgeous blend that we're getting of the color. And I'll just continue this all throughout that stencil. Since there's thin lines in the stencil, if I go in a circular motion, sometimes they move a little bit. So to get the cleanest result, I'm just going to follow the lines of the stencil by going up and down like this, and you'll still get a really great and smooth blend. I also wanted to talk about using blending brushes in this instance. Because there's so many little bristles in these brushes, they really get into the details. And this stencil has a lot of little sharp edges and fine detailed points. So using a blending brush is really ideal to get all of those details and get a really crisp blended image. I find that the sponge tools are also great, but in this instance where there's so much detail, sometimes it leaves a little rounded edge rather than getting all of those details. So that's why a blending brush can be really helpful. All right, so once we get that whole thing blended, we can then lift off our stencil. And I mean, check out how gorgeous that design is just on its own like this. I absolutely love it. It looks so elegant and beautiful. All right, so this is where the stencil started out. Now, with a lot of stencils in your collection at home, definitely try moving and shifting them because you can do this with most stencil designs. This design wasn't meant or intended to be shifted when I first designed it, but when I was playing around with it, I learned that if you shift it over just a little bit, this diamond pattern actually lines up with a different part of the stencil as well. So these vertical lines will line up, but the patterns are a little bit different. And then for this layer, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of no diving ink, which is one of my favorite blue colors from the line. And again, I'll use one of the large Altenew blending brushes. I have one for each color family, which makes it really easy to switch between colors that I'm using. And I'll just go in with this blue color all over that background and layer it on top of the pink. And you can see that as we layer this, it's covering up the pink in those certain areas, and it's gonna create like a new purple tone as you layer it up. So because they're translucent, you can still see all the pink underneath, and it's gonna layer on top to create a beautiful and bold new looking color. 
All right, and once that's complete, we'll do the final reveal where we lift it off and check out how stunning that is. This really illustrates the overlapping to create new colors really well because you can see that beautiful purple color that was created wherever it overlaps. But wherever the blue is alone, you can still see that blue. And wherever the second stencil was, it still shines through that really bright pink color. And it creates such a really great layered 3D effect. And like I said, try this with stencils you have at home, shift them up, down, flip them over, or move them to the side too and you can maybe get some really cool effects. Like I said, this one was by total accident, but I absolutely love it, and I pretty much consider this one a layering stencil because of all the cool looks you can get with it. I do also want to say, and this is not a rush for you guys to go out and buy things, but sometimes stencils will sell out. I know there's a smaller quantity of that one left, and usually when that stencil sells out, it's probably going to be discontinued because we have to order a lot more if we want to keep replenishing it. So if you see a stencil from my line that's just absolutely calling you and that you're really drawn to, I would definitely recommend purchasing it when you can, because like I said, if you wait too long, they might sell out and be gone forever. That's not a push for you to buy more though. Some people ask where the stencils go, so I just wanted to explain that we don't usually reorder after they sell out. And because I promised how well they stamped too, I want to show you quickly how to do a stamped image with them and get a great impression. So I'm going to go in with this beautiful bloom stamp set. I love this because it's got quite a bit of detail, so you can see just how well it stamps. All right, we'll go in with a little bit of no diving, which is this gorgeous blue color. Give it a couple taps onto my stamp with a bit of pressure, and then we'll stamp it right onto my stark white cardstock. A perfect, crisp, and detailed stamped impression with no splotchiness, and it captured all of the details beautifully. All right, now I know what you're thinking. You have to stamp a solid image too, right? I'm five steps ahead of you. I got out the hot diggity dog stamp set here, and there's this really great solid dog image that I'll stamp out. So with this one, I thought I would stamp the dog in this dark brown weeping willow color. I absolutely love this color. So I'll go in and ink it up by pressing a bit of ink all over the stamp. And again, you wanna use some pressure to do this because the ink comes out of the pad with pressure. So give it some good pressure. You'll look at the stamp to make sure it's nice and covered in ink. And once it is, we can stamp it right down into our project, giving it some good pressure. And you'll see, check out how beautiful that stamped. And these stamped impressions are after using my ink pad day after day without re-inking them. I haven't re-inked either of these pads in a long time, but you can see they still stamped really great with tons of detail and no splotchiness. So I know that's quite a few techniques with just ink pads, and you probably already know all those techniques as well, but I wanted to share how my ink pads work with each one. So next time someone asks what makes the Simon Hurley ink pads different, just show them this video so I don't have to go through all that talking again. <laughs> my voice is already messed up and we're barely just at the start of this video. Now let's dive into stamping foam. I get a lot of questions about it at these trade shows because it's quite a new concept to a lot of these people. And I get so excited to share it because it's such a wow factor product and it's really versatile in your craft stash. So we started out with this smaller rectangle size of stamping foam, which is probably my favorite, and it comes in a pack of four. Then we introduced shape stamping foam. So you can get packs of circle stamping foam with the frame or heart stamping foam with the frame as well. These are really awesome because you can either use the circle or heart alone, or you can use the frame alone, or you can layer them together to create a two-tone background. And then lastly, we came up with this larger size stamping foam and a pack of two, which covers an A2 size card in a design really nicely. So let me show you how it works. You're gonna need to start out by getting a texture ready. And this could be anything. I've used leaves from outside. I've used sweaters. This one would be kind of a cool pattern to get. I've used pillows, placemats, and you can also look into your craft stash. You can use cutting dies, embossing folders, stamps, stencils. The possibilities are really endless with all of the textures you can use with this. We were given this really awesome plastic water ball at Creative World in Germany, and it's got this great cityscape at the bottom of it. So I'm gonna use this in my stamping foam, and I'll even show you how a circular object works with the stamping foam. So I would usually say place your texture down onto your surface like this so you can stamp into it, but since it's a water bottle like this and it's round, we're going to stamp the water bottle into the stamping foam. But whatever you do, just have your texture at the ready because you'll want to do it fast. So I'm going to go in with a heat tool. This is the Ranger heat tool, which I like because it disperses heat pretty evenly since it's got a wide nozzle, but it still gets really hot. You can't use a hair dryer for this. I'm gonna turn it on and heat it for about 10 to 15 seconds, keeping your heat tool moving to make sure that it's evenly heated and that nothing burns. And once you've got it good and hot, turn off your heat tool and start pressing your texture into your stamping foam immediately. Here, I just rolled it over top of the surface, making sure to keep it moving. And you can see we've got that really great cityscape into the stamping foam now. 
How cool is that? And a common misconception with the stamping foam is that the texture needs to be super deep. But you can see here, that texture is really thin, but it's still going to give us a great impression. So now I'm gonna go in with several colors of my Simon Hurley Create ink, and instead of tapping like this to stamp, because you don't get much ink on the surface, I'm gonna go in and swipe my ink pads on. And you can see, you're gonna get a much richer and deeper color by swiping them onto the surface like this. And just do it with a light pressure because we don't want our ink to get all the way down into the texture of the stamp. Then I can go in with several different colors. Here I'm using no diving. And by bringing in this darker blue, it just adds a little bit of depth to the design. And if we need to blend in between colors, I can go in with a blending brush or blending sponge and blend right between both of those colors. And then last but not least, I'll go in with Midnight Snack, which is my darkest blue. I'll bring it in at the bottom and swipe it onto the surface here for even more dimension. And I'll go in here and lightly mist over top of the surface. You wanna lightly mist so there's a nice fine mist and you can see there's no globs of water on the surface. That mist is just gonna help transfer the color but we don't wanna turn it into a watercolor or ruin the design. Then I'll bring in a piece of Simon Hurley Stark White cardstock and stamp this right down onto the surface, giving it some good pressure to transfer all of that beautiful design. And when we lift it off that surface, Check that out. You get this beautifully stamped image and that gorgeous design all throughout. And that was from a water bottle, which is so cool. And you saw how thin that design was on the water bottle, but all of it still transferred so beautifully onto the stamped image. So don't be too worried if the impression looks thin. The ink will do all the magic there. And by swiping it on like that, you can still see all of the amazing texture and design. Then I'll go in with a little bit of water and spray it down onto the surface. And again, my Simon Hurley Create inks don't really stain. So I'll go right in and clean this off with a cloth. And you can see the ink comes off really nice and easily. Now you can leave this image in here if you like it, just don't reheat it and that stamp will stay perfectly in the stamping foam. But the moment you wanna change it, all you need to do is bring in a heat tool and heat this up. And as you heat it, it will slowly flatten out just as it was and return to the regular stamping foam that you can keep reusing over and over with different textures, which is so cool. So it's a reusable product and you can use both sides or the edges of the stamping foam for lots of versatility. I love this product so much just for the sheer fact that you can use it in so many different ways in your craft room. And it really extends the life of any texture by turning it into a stamp you can use on your cards. Now let's jump into Lunar and Solar Paste because these were one of the highlights of my show and I know you guys have been absolutely loving them too. I have some new tips to share about both. Let's start off by talking about Solar Paste, which is probably one of the more misunderstood products that I've released. I've shared quite a bit about them on my channel here, but I never really shared my intentions for using them. I just kind of put them out into the world and let you all speak and use them. And it's really cool seeing all of your amazing creations, but one of the biggest comments that I get about Solar Paste is that they really only work on black cardstock which is not true, stop lying. If you believe that, I'm gonna show you why it's the complete opposite for me at least, and maybe this will make you change your mind about Solar Paste if you were on the fence about them, because they are super cool, but maybe a little bit misunderstood. So if you don't know about Solar Paste, we have six different colors in rainbow, and each one of these is a white paste. So they're all exactly the same base formula to them, but there's a shifting mica inside of each one of these. So let's open Beluga, which is that blue color, and you can maybe see a little bit of that blue tint in there. These are packed with an iridescent mica inside of each one that you can really only see the color of when it's shifted in the light, which creates for a really cool and unique effect. All right, so I'm gonna first use them on white cardstock using the In Bloom layering stencil, but I'm only going to use the first layer, which has these really great larger florals. I'll place this right down on my cardstock. Then I'll bring in a bit of mint tape to hold it in place while we do our stenciling. All right, and then for this floral color combo, I'm gonna go in with Royal Flush, Cross My Heart, and overheated pastes. I'll go in with my palette knife from the paste tool set, scrape on a bit of color at the bottom, and I'm gonna use a little bit more than I probably need because it makes swiping them across the surface way easier. Moving into Cross My Heart, which is this beautiful pink color. I'll swipe it down onto the surface. And then actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch it to this golden hour color because this one's absolutely beautiful. So I'll bring this in and swipe it at the end there. Then I'll go in with my scraper tool that also comes in the paste tool set, and I'm just going to take this paste that's at the bottom of the background, and I'll easily swipe it down the whole background. Now, if you're trying to swipe and your paste really doesn't cover the rest of it, but you still have paste left on your scraper tool, you're going to wanna to take this tool and tilt it downward a little bit more, and then swipe. 
that's going to deposit more paste onto your background from that tool, so you'll be able to cover the background a lot easier and fill in any of the open areas really nicely. Then to smooth it out, tilt it at more of an upright angle and swipe it across the background. And it doesn't look like much right now, but when we lift it off this background, you get that really beautiful background of florals. And then when you're using paste, you just want to spray it down with water before anything dries. It's really easy to clean off with water while it's still wet, but once it dries, it's permanent, so it'll be a lot harder to clean. So I always recommend doing it right away. Then with any of the excess paste, since it's blended together, you don't want to put it in a jar. So I'm just going to take this on a background and swipe it right onto a piece of black cardstock. This is going to create a beautiful background of color, and you can already see some of that iridescent mica shining through, but once it dries, it'll be even more intense. So yes, it's definitely more bold on black cardstock, but I'm excited to show you the white background too. And one thing that I love about lunar and solar paste is that you're able to heat set it to help it dry along in the process. So usually it would take about 30 or 40 minutes to air dry, depending on the climate that you're in, but I like to go in with this Ranger heat tool, which kind of disperses the heat since it has a bigger opening, and just heat set it all across the background. This should take about two to three minutes, depending on how thick you applied it, and as long as you keep the heat tool moving along the surface, it shouldn't bubble or puff up on you. I love that it's pretty heat stable, so you can help it dry, because I'm quite impatient. All right, and here's what that background looks like once it's dry. You can see that purple, pink, and yellow really shining through on the background now. Now, it's not super strong or intense, but it's not meant to be for me. Really, the point of solar paste, just using it plain on white cardstock like this, is to add texture and just a slight amount of color, but not take away from a focal point that you want to add to your card. And the reason I love something a little bit more subtle like this, but it still adds lots of texture, is because if you have a focal point, just like this little butterfly that we stamped earlier, for example, that is quite small, but there's no vellum or anything needed to really make it stand out against this backdrop. So of course, if you had more butterflies or a bigger focal point, it would just be perfect right in the center of this card and the background is adding rather than distracting too much from the actual focal point of the card. And I promised that I would show this one that's dry too. You can see the colors are a lot more bold on the black cardstock. And this is really great if you wanna just trim it down and use it as a beautiful background or you can die cut words or images out of it. I just love this because you can't find many colored cardstocks that have kind of a blend of colors and have this beautiful metallic looking cardstock, but it's not too metallic like some mirrored cardstocks. It's just got this really gorgeous sheen to it. All right, and now a really fun technique with solar paste is mixing them as well. So I'm gonna go in using a little bit of overheated, which is this gorgeous orange color. I'll scoop a bit out of my jar. And then I'm going to grab a Simon Hurley ink pad or re-inker. I'm gonna use Crown Me, which is a purple color. And usually we know that purple and orange do not mix. They will create brown if you mix them together, which is not a fun color. But in this instance, the Simon Hurley ink pad is a translucent dye-based ink, which is a liquid ink, and this is colored with mica powders. So because the mica powder is a solid and the dye ink or re-inker is a liquid, they won't mix together. So you're able to mix these perfectly fine and get a beautiful purple color instead of getting brown. But it's also important that it's translucent, not opaque, not a pigment ink, because that would cover up the mica that's inside of here. So I'm gonna go in straight with the re-inkers because this is a lot more concentrated of a color, so you're able to get a lot darker of a color a lot faster. So I'll just put in two little drops. You can always add more if you want to, but you can't take it away. So I always start a little bit smaller, but like I said, this re-inker is strong. So when you start mixing it in here, you're gonna get this gorgeous, brilliant purple color, and I absolutely love it. And you can mix this as much as you want, or you can leave it a little bit marbled to get kind of a tie-dye effect. All right, then I'm gonna go in with that Deco Diamond stencil again. I'll bring in that paste that we've mixed and place it right at the top of that background. And again, I'll bring in that scraper tool, and I'm just going to scrape this down the background to smooth it out really beautifully. Then we can lift this stencil off and check out that beautiful design. All right, and here it is once it's dry. And unfortunately right there, my heat tool got a little bit too close and ruined the paste, but I'm not gonna redo it. You can still see the effect here. You get this really beautiful kind of pinkish, orangish hue when you tilt it in the light. And then when you look at it straight on, it's just a purple paste. So it's a really cool kind of shifting effect and you can mix any color into whatever color paste you want. Like I said, there's no limits and you get that cool shifting effect. So blue shifting to a green would be really fun for water. You can mix the yellow re-inker into the orange paste for like a candle on a birthday card. So lots of fun options when it comes to mixing your paste with colors and creating these really cool kind of shifting effects on your cards. Then we'll take any of the excess and swipe it down onto a piece of white cardstock. 
All right, last but not least, let's cover the highlight of the show for me, which is that we released these new neon lunar pastes right before we left for New Orleans. And I'm so excited about these seven neon colors and what they bring to the palette. What's really unique about these neons is that they've got a bit of mica in them. So they got this really gorgeous, subtle shine as well as being neon, which is really hard to do. You have to get the ratio perfect. Otherwise the colors don't look neon anymore. So you usually don't see neon products with any shine, but these have a nice kind of pearly shine to them, which gives a gorgeous effect. And I feel like makes them less scary because sometimes neons can be too bright for people. So let's do one of my favorite stamping techniques using them. I'm gonna use some of the warmer colors. So I'm starting off with Mood Ring, which is this beautiful purple magenta type color. And you don't really need a ton for this technique. So I'm just gonna use a little bit at the top here. Then I'll bring in Hot Mess, which is this gorgeous bright pink color. Grab a little bit and add it to the top. Next I'm using Tangent, which is this gorgeous orange, a super bright like highlighter color. Last but not least, Yellow Jacket, which is the warmer orange color in the line. And it's still super bright and beautiful. Now again, I'm gonna grab the scraper tool, start right at the top, and then just swipe this all the way down the background. And again, go at a low angle with the tool like this and you'll get it to cover a lot of the surface area. That is looking stunning and I love the blend of colors all throughout. All right, now next I'm gonna go in with a background stamp. You wanna use something that has a fine detail like these images. This one is called Candles and this one is called Darling Dahlias. If you have too bold or graphic of an image, it can push the paste a little bit too much, whereas these detailed images just press into it really nicely. So I'm gonna use the Candles stamp and just plop this right down into that wet paste and give it some pressure. This is why you want the layer underneath to be pretty thin because if it's too thick, it'll just smoosh all over the place. But when it's nice and thin like this, it just gives a really great impression. And you can see that candle design pressed into that beautifully. And once this dries, it'll hold all of this texture and it just creates the background for the perfect birthday card. And super easy to do too. Then the arguably even cooler part happens when you flip this over and you've still got excess onto your stamp. I'm gonna spray it down with just a little bit of water and then I'll go in with my black cardstock place it down and give it some good pressure to make sure that all of this paste transfers. And when you lift this off, check out that beautiful stamped impression. Now you do wanna be really quick and thorough about your cleaning because it's in your rubber stamp now. So I like to either go in with a rub it, scrub it pad. This is from Ranger. It's got this nice kind of dense sponge on the front of it and it's got a nice foam backer which makes it really easy to hold. So you can go in here and scrub your stamp down quite a bit easier and it gets into lots of the little details of the stamp to clean it all out. That gets a lot of the paste loose and moving and then I go in with a microfiber cloth and I just clean it out because the fibers in this cloth get down into those little details and will pick up a lot of that excess paste that's in there. And that gets your stamp perfectly clean for the next time you wanna use it. But you wanna make sure to remove all that paste so that it stamps great for the next time. And this stamped image dries a lot quicker because it's so thin. It's just a matter of a minute or two and you get this beautiful neon stamped impression on that black card stock, which is so cool. And there's even a little bit of texture to that stamping because it was the texture paste. It leaves it just a bit raised, which is so cool. Now the reason that's so unique is because any sort of pigment ink or anything that you put onto a card stock like this needs to be set to dry. So that would involve some embossing powder or an extra step because the ink just kind of always ends up staying sticky. So with something like this, you're getting a neon stamped impression with a little bit of shine and it all stays onto the surface and doesn't come off in your hands once you're completely done, which is so super cool. So you might not have known you can stamp with lunar or solar paste, but it creates a really great impression and I can't wait to see you guys trying it. All right, so let me show you what to do with this background in case you're a little bit confused how to finish it off into a card. So first I'm gonna start off by chopping this down to an A2 card front size. And what I like about chopping things down like this is you can sort of choose what sections your favorite since it's on a lot bigger piece of cardstock. All right, that looks just about perfect. Then I'll use some of the Barely Arts liquid glue that I've put into the Misty glue press and apply it all over the back of my background. I love the glue press because it's so easy to add glue down. And then it's got this stand too that keeps it nice and airtight while you're not using it. So you don't have to worry about the cap or anything. So I've been a recent convert to using liquid glue because of it. And I've been liking liquid glue because you got a little bit of time to move it around and make sure it's nice and centered before you're completely set into place. So I'm just gluing this down to a top folding A2 size stark white card base. Then I'm going to go into this candles background stamp and the center row actually peels apart so you can use it separately. And I just wanna use a couple of these little candle images. So I'll pop it onto my large acrylic block and then I'll ink just a few of these up using some VersaFine Claire and Nocturne ink, which is gonna give me a nice crisp and jet black impression. And then we'll stamp it right down onto our card front. Perfect. And this ink takes a little bit longer to dry, so to set it into place, I'm gonna throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder. I'll tap off any of the excess, and then I'll heat set this till it's clear and shiny. 
And then I'll take some of my Simon Hurley Create inks in some similar colors to the background and just swipe them down onto my craft sheet to create a nice palette of color that we can lift off of and do some watercoloring with. So I always start off by just adding a layer of water down to the surface, which is going to help the inks blend rather than just sinking right into the cardstock. A little layer of water like that makes a big difference in how the inks are gonna blend on the surface. Then I'll go right into my colors. Here I'm going with Triple Berry, which is that beautiful purple color. And I'm just going to add it right down to the candle. And you can see because we add that water down, it's gonna give us a nice smooth and even blend of color. Then we can go in with a little bit less water and that same exact color, and it's going to give us kind of a shaded effect. And I'll just add shading to one side of that candle. And for this next one, I'll go in with a little bit of Prom Queen, which is this pink color. And I'll use a little bit less water and that same color. And again, go in and add shading to one side of the candle. Next, I'll bring in Guppy, which is this light orange color. And then last but not least, we'll use some yellow shooting star on this candle and add a little bit of shading to one side. All right, and I wanna pop these up and spotlight them on the card, so I'm gonna to have to separate them. And I'm just going in with my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors to cut them out, which is pretty easy because they're a fairly simple shape, but I love these Spring Assist Scissors because they spring back out at you so your hands won't get tired as you're cutting. And they're also a nice fine point, so you're able to get into some of the little details like that candle flame to cut it all out. And I just leave a little white border as I'm cutting, which helps if you're not super perfect against that black line, but it's also gonna make it stand out against that super colorful background. So that little layer of white is gonna help highlight it and really make it pop and stand out. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit of foam tape on the back of these so they stand off the card really nicely. I love how this pop off the card, but it's the same image as the background, so it all ties together beautifully. And then I'm gonna go in with the Birthday Basic stamp set, which has some great birthday sentiments, as well as some really beautiful imagery. And I like to look through the clear acetate sheet and just see what's gonna work the best here. Put Wish Big right there, or I could like overlap it with Celebrate, which I think is what I'm gonna do. All right, now I'm gonna heat and boss the sentiment on black cardstock. So I'll use my anti-static powder bag, so nothing sticks where we don't want it to. And then I'll use my Versafine clear sticky ink to ink up my sentiment and stamp it right down onto my cardstock. Then I'll sprinkle over top my white heat embossing powder, tap off any of the excess, and I find lightly blowing on it too gets rid of any of the excess powder, and then we can heat set it till it's nice and bright white. And I love the intense contrast that white embossing powder has against the black cardstock. It's just stunning. And here's a closer look at that finished card. I love those bold neons in the background and how they still have quite a bit of shine to them, but they really stand out nicely. And that stamping technique into the wet paste is so stunning. Then finishing it off using that same candle stamp for the focal point is a really fun way to tie everything together. And I just love how colorful and bright this one is. I cannot wait to send this birthday card out. All right, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching my recap of what I shared at Creativation and Creative World. I hope you enjoyed seeing a more in-depth look at my products and hopefully you walked away today learning something new. Leave me a comment down below, let me know which project or tip was your favorite. And also down there is a full supplies list to everything that I used and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon for another card making and crafting video.